Hi, this is Karen Tibbles from Ethical Frames to talk to you today about a hot issue where the brand should take a stand on political or social issues and how market research can assist in making that decision. It seems that many brands are taking stands on social issues. The most prominent is when Nike used Colin Kaepernick in their 30th anniversary Just Do It campaign that drew more attention to the issue of black men being in prison. This year, Gillette created a video on the issue of toxic masculinity, which created a media storm. Nike appears to have done well, but not all the results have been positive. When the Parkland shooting happened last year in Florida and Delta eliminated discounts to the National Rifle Association and Dick's Sporting Goods stopped selling assault rifles, both of them got blowback. Delta got hit with the elimination of a fuel tax exemption in Georgia, which affected the entire industry, and Dick's sales haven't recovered yet. One reason often given for brands taking a stand is that millennial buyers want brands to stand for something. But when asked by the consulting firm Deloitte about their intentions to take a stand, 80% of chief marketing officers say they're not going there. Let's dig into the debate a little bit more. On the pro side is Jim Stengel, former chief marketing officer of P&G, who wrote a book on this called The Grow. In his book, he claims that his study proved that taking a stand helped brands go faster. Similarly, Simon Sinek said that if you start with why, everything is better, including brands. This year, the Cannes Advertising Festival dedicated an entire section to brands claiming to take stands on issues. On the other side is a gentleman by the name of Richard Stoughton, who's a British brand planner, and he spent quite a bit of time investigating Jim Stengel's study. He says Stengel's logic is flawed, and that Stengel has stretched the definition of taking a stand so far, it is meaningless. Further, he's found that all of the references supporting taking a stand, is, that is a good idea, traces back to that single flawed study. That's a pretty weak basis for brands taking a risky stand. Other criticisms include the hypocrisy of the speakers at cons and the belief among some that taking a stand and then not following through on a meaningful way contributes to declining trust in advertising. And taking a stand doesn't work out as well as people think it will. Using a simple survey question to gauge potential impact overestimates that impact. But we in market research know that there's always a gap between intention and action, and we put a lot of effort into distilling reality from survey data. Luckily for us, Davini, Auger, and Eckert have already put in the effort and published their research in a book entitled The Myth of the Ethical Consumer. To summarize their findings, you can measure the gap between intention and action by using a trade-off methodology. They've tried out two of them, but I prefer discrete choice for this issue. They found that the group who does act is small, about 10%, and varies by product category. People who act or tend to be those who previously have already taken an action, and that's why the group is so small. <clears throat> and you can throw out that millennial claim, action doesn't differ by age. I've created a list of do's and don'ts about for how to do research on this issue. A survey can be helpful, but you need to use a trade-off method, not a simple scale. Further, you need to take into account who your target audience is and how many of them might be alienated by taking a stand, something Divini et al. don't address. Forecasting the, impact of the forecasting the impact of the strategic choice needs to take all of this into account. For more details, see my website where you can find a white paper on this controversy and the methodology I recommend for brands considering this option. If you're faced with this issue, I'm available to help develop the research design. Finally, there are other strategic options for taking a stand. Brands can take on social issues in a less controversial way using a technique called reframing. How to do this is explained in my book, Marketing Landlines, The Next Generation of Emotional Branding, available on Amazon. I'm also available to consult on developing new strategic options using reframing and for speeches, training, and workshops on this topic. For more details, consult my website or email me at info at I look forward to questions. Hope to talk to you soon.